Hi everyone, Mike here from Comp3 Interactive. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at the basics of inheritance. Now, what is inheritance? Well, it's actually one of the fundamental attributes of object-oriented programming. This isn't native to Unity itself. This can be used in any C# -sharp application, and it's extremely useful for helping you cut down on reused code. Now, we put it very simply, what inheritance allows you to do is it allows you to define a child class that could be reused when you inherit other classes from it and it allows you to extend or modify certain behaviors of the parent class so we'll just jump straight into it and i'll show you a way that we can use this in our games So let's take a look at what I've got here. All I've got are two scripts, one for the base for a piece of armor and another for the base of a weapon. So if we have a look at these in Visual Studio, we can see that they are scriptable objects. They have some quite generic fields, a single field that's unique to the weapon object, and then a few methods, which again are very generic that we wanna be able to use on every one of our items. If we have a look at the armor, we have exactly the same generic fields, a different unique, and then again, all the same methods. And these are just two classes. We could have resources that are gonna need every one of these fields. We could have consumables, which again, would need all of these fields. So you get the idea, this could get very large, very quickly, and all we're doing is repeating ourselves over and over again. Another example of why inheritance is actually useful is the fact that, say we had more than the two, say we had 15 scripts that all had these fields, and we wanted to add an extra field in there. So we can just call this a bool, and we'll have, it, we'll have it set for whether or not a uh, item is a legendary item. Now, we can have legendary armors, but now we've got to copy and paste this into every one of our classes and if we miss one we may get some errors things may not work as we expect so fixing this is actually very very simple all we need to do is we'll create a new c-sharp script and we'll call this item open this up in visual studio and we don't need our start and update methods now this item class isn't going to be the item itself. This is gonna be the base class with all the items parameters. So very simply what we can do, we can open up our weapon script. We know that we're gonna need all of these, so we can paste those in. The same goes for a reduce durability method, repair the item. Every item's gonna have a use functionality and potentially we're always going to want a buy and sell method. So we can throw these all into our items class. And one thing we do need to make sure, which I'll cover in a little bit more detail in just a second, if we take note, our weapon and our armor are both scriptable objects. So we want to make sure that item inherits from scriptable object rather than mono behavior. So we can jump back over into our weapon and now a weapon, instead of inheriting from scriptable object, will inherit from item. And we see we get a few warning messages. This is because the base class, in our instance item, takes priority. So all of these errors are saying that we have a duplicate name. But we can fix that by simply deleting everything out of this class, apart from our unique field items, or item fields, rather. And we can do exactly the same with our armor. So we'll inherit from item, we'll remove all the generic fields, and we'll also remove all the methods. So I hope you can already see how much better our scripts are looking there. We have our unique fields in both. We could also add any unique methods to weapon or armor. And every time we need to add a new field, we only need to add it once in our items class. So we can see that this is still working. If we right click create asset, 
We can choose our weapon or our armor. We'll choose a weapon. And we'll just call this sword, for example. And we can see that we have our generic fields that are coming from our item class. And we also have the damage value down at the bottom here, which is inside of our weapon class. And we can do exactly the same for our armor piece. Call that helmet. And we see everything's exactly the same apart from we have a damage resistance rather than a damage value. And if we just go ahead and, as an example, remove our new is legendary boolean, we can see that our sword updates to remove is legendary and also our helmet. So we can control all these fields from one area. But let's just go back to our script and we can see that we inherit a use method. Now we can populate this in any way that we like, but not every item is going to need the same use case. For example, using a sword, we're going to swing it. If we use a health portion, we're going to drink it and we want to increase our health. So how do we get around this while still inheriting this use method? This is where we can use an abstract class and an abstract method. So inside our item class, we can tell the compiler that we want item to be abstract. Currently though this means nothing, we need to mark our use method as abstract as well. And what this is going to do, this is going to force all of our components, our scripts that are inheriting from item to contain their own use method. So with an abstract method we can't actually have a body meaning we can get rid of our curly brackets and just cap this off with a semicolon. So now, if we save this and jump back over to our weapon, we can see that we get an error that says we do not implement the inherited abstract member item.use. So we're going to need to create a use method for our weapon and our armor. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll make this a public, and we want to override our abstract use method, match the return type, which is void, and call it exactly the same name, which is use. Oops, autocorrect. And we can copy this method out into our armor as well. So now, even though we inherit the use method, in our weapon, we can have it do whatever we like. So we could add the code to swing our weapon. And then in our armor, we could add the code, for example, apply the damage resistance. Now, just circling back around to what I said before about inheriting from scriptable object inside our item class. Well, C Sharp only allows single inheritance, meaning you can only inherit from one base class for each parent class. But there is a sort of workaround for this, wherein we can create a structural hierarchy for our classes. So, in this instance, our item class is our base class which inherits from scriptable object. So based on the hierarchy, because item inherits from scriptable object and weapon inherits from item, weapon effectively inherits from scriptable object as well. And because behind the scenes scriptable object inherits from mono behavior, that means a weapon will also have mono behavior features and functions. So if your derived classes weren't actually scriptable objects, they were just standard mono behaviors, your item class could just inherit from, or should just inherit from, mono behavior. Unless, of course, you don't actually need mono behavior features in these classes, then item doesn't need to inherit from anything, really. So just as a final example, we can actually take this one level further. If we were to create a new script, and we'll call this helmet, and we'll open this up in Visual Studio, and remove our start and update, and this time, instead of inheriting from mono behavior or item, we can actually inherit from armor. So now, any new helmet that we create will have all of armor's fields and methods. So a helmet would have damage resistance and it would have a use method. And it would also contain all of our item fields and methods. And you could do this as many times as you like to make your 
items a bit more customizable. It's not strictly advisable to go too deep with inheritance just because it makes things a little bit difficult to follow when you're trying to debug code. But on the flip side of that, it does actually provide a lot of benefits wherein you can create base classes and pick and choose which ones are needed for individual items, cutting down on a lot of your overused code, making for a much easier to follow project. So I hope you can see how valuable inheritance is. This is just a very basic overview, but I think I've covered some of the key aspects and I hope to see you using this in your games very soon. If you've learned something today, then drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel. You can also find us over on social media for more bite-sized Unity and C-Sharp tips. I've been Mike for Comp3 Interactive, and I'll see you again soon.